Well, my first guest, as you know, is a familiar face on our program, Boston Properties Chairman and CEO Mort Zuckerman. And if you've been following his writings in the past year, or the past few years for that matter, uh, you know that he has been critical of President Obama and the White House for their policies on job creation and also relations with business, even though Mort had been an early supporter of the president. Mort, great to have you back with us. Good to be here. Uh, let me start with Europe first, though, because that's really what's been driving the headlines this morning. And, uh, you know, I know about a month ago you had hosted um, the EC president, um, jo you know, Jose or Jose Manuel Barroso at your home. Um, and I want to know, what did he tell you at that time? And did it give you any confidence that they would be able to resolve the situation? Given his position, I thought he spoke brilliantly. He said everything was going to be just fine. And now? It's not. I mean, nobody could have predicted everything that happened, but I think uh, the entire European economy is in terrible shape now. Uh, they have huge debt problems. They have huge fiscal problems. They have no way of resolving them politically. There's no common fiscal policy that they can work with. Greece is just the canary in the coal mine, okay, because mm -hmm. Italy is in terrible shape, Spain is in terrible shape. They're going to need somewhere between two and three trillion euros to solve those fiscal problems. I don't see where it comes from. And the confidence factor, which is critical in all of this, has got to be eroding every day and every week, given especially what's happened with Greece. So would you say that the risk is even higher now, that Europe could in fact destroy any type of recovery that we have seen so far here in the U.S.? Well, I don't know that the question is the word, the word, the popular word is contagion. It is clearly going to spread throughout Europe. Uh, but whether or not it spreads over here to the degree that it will unwind what we have accomplished, that remains to be seen. It is certainly going to have an effect here. It's going to affect the financial world, and it's going to affect our exports, and it's going to affect the thing that, in my judgment, is the most fragile part of our economy, which is confidence. And as an investor, does it make you want to sit on your hands in terms of anything to buy in Europe? <sighs> I, I have been, no, actually it's an opportunity because we are in a very liquid position as a company and so we see the possibility that there may be, for example, buildings for sale that wouldn't have otherwise been for sale. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I have been very cautious about the American economy now for five years. Right. I remain very cautious about it. I do not see yet where the elements are that are going to turn around this economy and cause us to have the kind of growth that we need to reduce unemployment, for example. Have you looked at buildings, by the way, in Europe? Just since yes. you raised that? Yes. yes. And are you actively in, in, in we, any talks? We are still looking. And okay. I'm thinking of buying Bloomberg, but that's on the <laughs> lower line on the list. Okay. All right. Well, you know, who knows? It's a start. It's a start, exactly. All right, Mort, let's talk about here in the U.S. As you just mentioned, though, <coughs> uh, the economy. You've been concerned about the economy here in the United States. Yep. However, recent data has shown that companies are hiring. It seems as if the housing market's bottoming out. We've had some good um, ISN numbers. I mean, it seems as if the economic data is supporting a recovery here. Well, maybe. Uh, here, I look at it slightly differently. It is true there have been some jobs that have been created, but we need 150,000 jobs every month just to deal with the people coming into the labor force. We're not even close to that at this stage of the game, so we're not making a dent in the unemployment numbers. But for me, the real issue now is not just unemployment, okay? It is not even just consumer sales, although they are slightly better, okay? Mm. Still modestly better. And if you adjust them for inflation, they're really not in any major increases in real terms. The real issue is confidence. And if you look at the consumer confidence numbers, and at the business confidence numbers and that the numbers of confidence in terms of our government, right. they're as low as they have been and they're way, way lower than they have been even when you average them out for all the previous recessions uh, since the end of World War II. We're 20% below that, both on the Industrial Conference Board's numbers and the University of Michigan numbers for the consumer. So I don't think that uh, we are by any means out of the woods. Well, talking about um, confidence and, and, and plans for the economy, let's look on the GOP side, right, and the yeah. presidential candidates. Uh, any of their tax reforms, or, you know, Herman Cain's 999 or Perry's flat tax, any of those appeal to you? Well, the basic idea, and I have been a public advocate of this now for quite a while, the basic idea of broadening the tax base and lowering and simplifying tax rates, I think is the best single thing we can do on a macroeconomic basis that might get both Republican and Democratic support. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, I think it'll encourage both the consumer and business. We spend eight billion hours, would you believe, 480 to 500 billion dollars a year preparing tax returns. That's ridiculous. I think it would 
be a huge benefit for the economy in the short term, in the intermediate term, in the long term. Whether or not politically that can be done is always the issue. Well, is the flat tax an answer to that, though, more? Well, a version of the flat tax. I mean, uh, whatever the flat tax is, uh, um, uh, Herman Cain's program sounded much better than it really was. But some. The 999 plan, yes, right. of course. 84% uh, of the people would pay more taxes according to a major study. But the real issue now is to find a simplified tax code because it distorts the, our current tax code distorts the economy and inhibits the real economic growth that we need. Look at all the other countries, Canada, Australia, they're all lowering their taxes and doing justice. That's what we have to do, but we have so many special interest group, uh, groups that have ties into Congress, it's very difficult. Well, I think a bipartisan, uh, you know, comment would be that the tax code is severely complicated and that it does need reform. Yeah, right. uh, Mort, great to see you. 